Okay, we want to get started on this Bible study. Uh, we want to talk about God's people, so we entitled this "My People," which is called, which are called by my name. No part of this publication may be reproduced or retransmitted without the express written consent of Bethel Temple Inc. of Chicago, which is under the leadership of Chief Apostle Dr. Yale Hokana B. Aman. The information that you are about to be presented is not independent of Bethel Temple Inc. of Chicago or Dr. Aman, who through revelational research, which includes biblical hermeneutics, has discovered the ancient biblical principles that were once kept by the prophets of old and later by Christ in the New Testament. These same principles were taught to the disciples by the Messiah, who then commanded them to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. <clears throat> uh, just go ahead and click on the green microphone speaker so that you can hear us. I think everybody um, is aware of that by, by now. Both of these are going to be, um, I mean, this Bible study is broken up into two parts. Part one is where we have our lecture, and everybody should be muted at this time. Um, we went ahead and muted everyone already. Part two is a question and answer. So throughout the Bible study, we, um, this is going to be a high-level overview of this particular topic. We ask that you have your pen and your pad um, ready. Um, be ready to write down your questions so when we get to the, answer, to the end, you can go ahead and press star six to get into the queue when we open up the question and answer session, and you'll be able to ask uh, questions. Uh, we want you to also notice that in the bottom right-hand corner, you will see a slide number. So if there's something regarding a particular slide, uh, just let us know what slide. We'll try to go back through it. <clears throat> we have three objectives on tonight. Um, our objective is to show that God's people must be called by his name. That's our first objective. Let me mute you here for a second, Elder. Our second objective uh, tonight is to show that in order to receive all of the covenants of promise, you must be called by this name and keep the commandments. And that second part is very important. So we must, we must be called by this name and we must keep the commandments. And lastly, um, our objective here is to show what this name means to the Jew and to the, and to the Gentile. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, we have our Elder Avery um, who's going to jump in and who is uh, an, an expert in this uh, particular area. He's an expert in all the areas, but he really likes this area, so um, he might run away with it today. So when we went through our Bible studies in the past, over the last three or four weeks, um, we talked about um, these covenant names. And God has names that he gives in order to fulfill his covenants. Um, this is kind of a, a blind spot in the religious community. Uh, what does a name mean? I mean, to most people, a name doesn't really mean nothing. But he gives names, and he gives them in order to fulfill his covenants. Um, last week, we talked about um, his house in Second Chronicles, and I'm over to the right-hand side of the slide. In Second Chronicles, second chapter, verse 4, and I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to read what we have here in black. It says, Behold, I build a house to the name of the Jehovah. And it, it, it went on to talk about so that we can keep his Sabbaths and his moons and his solemn feast days. And it went on to say that this is an ordinance forever to Israel. In, in English, we see Israel. We're going to talk about that today. Um, God's sacred name. Um, we talked about this about two or three weeks ago. Ezekiel, the 39th chapter, verse 7 says, So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people, Israel. Again, in English is Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name anymore. And so we're going to see that the covenants of promise was made with the people uh, of Israel. Um, and we talked about his sacred name. So it also goes to show that his sacred name, according to Ezekiel 39, 7, his sacred name is going to be put in the midst of his people. And so when we want to look for any of these covenant names, um, one of the first two things that we notice is that whether it was his house or whether it was his sacred name, we see that that covenant was with Israel. And then today what we really want to focus on is the people, God's people, and um, Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verse 1, and we're going to revisit this Bible verse today. 
It says, But now thus says the Jehovah Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. And so we're going to focus on Isaiah 43, 1 and a number of other uh, biblical verses that talk about his people. <clears throat> this uh, particular slide here is something that we talked about about four weeks ago in Bible study, that religions establish their own names and that these names belong to them. And uh, we want to be a little bit redundant in this because we were talking about religion. But we see that Martin Luther, you know you heard of the Lutherans. Well, that name belongs to him. He named the people. And so we see in 1517, he named them the Lutherans. Um, we got the Baptists, John Smith. This didn't come from God. This came from John Smith in 1609. John Wesley named his people the Methodists. And I'm going to just go through uh, these particular, and as you can see, uh, the Mormon, all these various religions, they came up with these names. When they started these religions, they gave, gave a name for the people of this particular religion. Um, in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verse 9, it says something that is um, in opposition to what we've just seen. It says that the Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself. As he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. So Martin Luther established the Lutherans. Ellen White established the Seventh-day Adventists. But the Bible tells us that the Lord will establish thee a holy people. Now, I know this was thousands and thousands of years ago um, when he established these people. And we're going to see on tonight how the establishment of this people was way back, way back with Jacob. But we're going to show the everlasting covenants that were made with the people that possess uh, this particular name. Uh, some of the feedback that you may get from people when you say the name Israel or you say that God established his covenant with Israel, uh, people will say, well, that was for back then. Those were ancient people. And so we're going to see that, yeah, the people died, just like people in this generation is going to pass on. But this name is an everlasting name. Okay. I just want to make sure, Eddie, are you still with me? Yes, I am. Can you hear okay. me? Yeah, okay. I can yes. hear you now. I just wanted to make a comment uh, as briefly as I can. I, I hope that I don't get carried away. But when we look at these names that you were just uh, referring to, these names came about through religion. I mean, names like Baptist and uh, we got uh, the Presbyterian. Well, the people gave these names because sometimes people looked in the Bible, they saw a name that appealed to them, and they decided, I'm going to name, that's the name of us, our people, or that's the name of, of the house. So you'll find people, they'll go in, they'll look, find the word Baptist, and they're going to say, well, we're the Baptist church. Well, let's think for a minute. The Baptist that was in the Bible, the only Baptist that I know of, and he wasn't a Baptist because he belonged to the Baptist religion, was John the Baptist. And he was called the Baptist simply because he baptized. Now, right. we can't allow people to trick us into thinking that these names came from the Bible. So what the trick is this. I'll get a word that's in the Bible. And it will convince you that this name was given as the name of his house or the name of his people. Uh, the Presbyterian. The Bible talks about the laying on hands of the Presbyterian. The Presbyterian was actually the, uh, the eldest. And if we just take our time and read the Bible, we'll find out that the Presbyterian was not a religion. It was not the name of his people, but they were just, they were the elders, and they laid their hands on individuals. So, I mean, there's plenty of names that we'll find. I'm, I'm going to try to wrap this up really quick. But the idea is that we, we have a group of people that call themselves Christians. They call themselves Christians. Uh, the Bible tells us that they were first called Christians at Antioch. That right. wasn't the name of a religion. They were Christians because they were Christ-like. 
So we can't just take what we want out of the Bible and make a name out of it. He gave us a name for his people. He gave us a name for his house. He even gave us a name for the Savior. So why are we picking our own, our own names? Right. So the names that we have actually tell who started it. Are you a Lutheran? Well, don't say that you're the people of God if you if you are Lutheran. You are the people of Martin Luther. And right. that, that's what I wanted to say. I want to make that clear, is that these, even if you find the word in the Bible, it doesn't mean that it was given as a name for its house. Let's read with understanding. Beautiful. Um, and then, you know, a lot of people will read and say, well, you know, that's, you guys are being technical. You know, um, I believe in the whole Bible, so what difference does it make what I call myself? And we're going to show that today. Well, you, what you're saying is fine, but you know what? What we're being is truthful. Right. I mean, uh, have you read in the Bible where it talks about the church of God, which is in Christ? We are the church of God. And the church of God is in Christ, but that was never given as the name of his house or the name of his people. Right. So we can't take names because they sound beautiful <laughs> or they sound appealing. Okay, if you want to do that, I can give you some names you can take. All right. You wouldn't like them. <laughs> Just as we've seen, uh, Elder, um, Satan's plot to destroy the name of God, and we've seen this. We've seen this um, when we talked about his holy sacred name, we've seen this when we talked about the name of the temple, and we see this again when we talk about the name um, of the people. Uh, the first Bible verse we have in Revelation 12, 9, and we read this every week, that uh, Satan deceiveth the whole world. It says, And the great dragon was cast out that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Now, people may read this and say, well, I'm not deceived. Well, somebody is deceived. In fact, it said that the whole world is deceived. Now, I know that's not inconceivable to most people. How is the whole world going to be deceived? That means nobody can be saved. But we're going to see a people who cannot be deceived. We're going to get back to Revelation 12, 12 and 9. Um, in the book of Daniel, uh, verse 7, verse Chapter 7, verse 25, Elder, it says, And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given to his hand until the time and times and the dividing of time. So, Elder, if we could talk a little bit about um, Daniel 7.25. What is this? Um, they, they're going to be given into his hands. Well, these verses that you gave, they, they actually go together if you think about it. The idea is that the whole world has been deceived. And let me tell you what tool was used to deceive the world. The tool that's used to deceive the entire world is religion. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I say this all the time. You could take ten ministers to stand up. And, and, and we can just take that list we had earlier. Ten ministers will get up and tell you, uh, well, the name of his people is Lutheran. Somebody else going to jump up and say, well, no, the name of his people is Jehovah's Witnesses. And you can go on and on and on. And you know what? Somebody's lying. And, you know, in this case, maybe mostly all of them are lying. You must allow yourself to see this in the Bible, not just see the word in the Bible, but see it there as a name. Those verses that were presented earlier actually show you that these are the names that, that El, which is God, gave unto his people, gave unto his house, and gave for salvation. So Daniel is simply uh, letting us know that there's going to come a time when this is going to be in the hands of the enemy. He's giving the enemy a head start. Mm -hmm. And you know what's going to happen? We read that verse the last time. Is where in, in the book of Isaiah that his house is going to be established, his people are going to be established, and, and it's going to be high in the mountains in the last days. So it doesn't matter that the enemy has deceived the world through religion. I mean, people are in love with, with uh, different religious perspectives, and they can't prove one way or another whether or not it's in the Bible. Right. But we're here to show you 
that these names are counterfeit. They were never given through the Bible as names of his people or names for his house. Mm -hmm. So Daniel actually pre-warns you about that. Good. And um, in Psalms 83rd chapter, verse 1 through 3, this is a powerful Bible verse, and I, I didn't want to have them all up at one time. I forgot to put the transitions in, but this goes on to show that it was a plot. I can give you the I can give you um, in Acts the fourth chapter I believe where it talked about there was a plot that no man speak the sacred name the holy salvation name of That's the son. All right. Here it talks about the people. Psalms eighty three one through three says, "For lo, thine enemies make a tumult, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones." Okay, so they, you know what you do when you take counsel, you get together and you plot. Um, they have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. How do you cut people off from being a nation? It says that the name of Yisrael, and we see Israel here, may be no more in remembrance. I'm so people may read this and say, well, I, I mean, until you get this particular lesson that we're talking about today, man, what's the big deal? They're going to cut them off from being a nation. But they just, I mean, how were they going to cut them off from being a nation? They were going to destroy the name. If you destroy the name of the people, you've destroyed the people. That the name, that this name may be no more in remembrance. Now, as we go through the Bible study, you're going to start noticing these covenants, these everlasting covenants that were made with this people. So Psalms 83, 1 through 3 is something that you should highlight in your Bible and show people that this is a um, plot. It was a plot. It has always been a plot. If there is a covenant that is established with not just the people, but the people that possess the name, well, you know, that's what Satan's trying to do. He's trying to destroy everybody that's trying to get to the kingdom. And if the covenant is made with the people that possess the name, then all I have to do is to, to destroy the name. Sorry. So, um, Elder Ivory, we want to talk a, a little bit about, uh, for people, uh, most people who are here in the Bible study um, may understand this, and it, it doesn't hurt to continue to go over this, but other people want to understand why we say Yisra, El, instead of um, Israel. Um, over to the right-hand side, we see that um, Israel can be found, the name Israel, can be found under number 3478 of the Hebrew Dictionary of the Strong's Concordance. And we see the transliteration here, um, Yisra El. So uh, the Strong Concordance is, is letting us know that the original name for Israel is Yisra El. So in order to kind of discuss why we say Yisrael, why the covenant was made with this people that possess the name Yisrael and not Israel, because some people will say, well, if Israel and Yisrael mean the same, and it's the same people. What difference does it make? That's but all right. Psalms 145.17, Elder, and let's just take one Bible verse at a time, and I guess we can talk about Psalms 145.17. I'll go ahead and read it. Um, if you want to comment, then I'll come back after you. It says, The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. So we're going to use that. And let me just read Exodus 3.18 because they go hand in hand. All right, let me read Psalms again. It says, The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. In Exodus, the third chapter, verse 18, it says, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us. So, Elder, what's the significance of using both of those Bible verses together? And how can we use these Bible verses to show why we must say uh, the name Yisrael instead of Israel? Well, uh, I think that, first of all, the first thing we need to establish is that we need to believe the word not to believe people. Because how do you think Satan is deceiving the whole world? He does it through people. Now, if you truly believe that he's righteous in all his ways and that he's holy in all his works, when he gives you his name, the name for his people, that's holy and righteous. When he gives you the name of his house, that's holy and righteous. He doesn't partake in anything that's not holy and righteous. Now, you might say, well, uh, well, the Bible is in English. Not originally it wasn't. So when he gave these names, these were his names. 
Remember we talked about two ways that you have his names that belong to him? It's either his personal name because it identifies him, or it's a name that he gave, that he instituted. For example, the name he gave to his people. But there's something unique about the name of his house and the name that he gave to his people. Yisrael has his name in it. If you look at the Hebrew word El, uh, which is God, his name is in their name. When you look at the name Bethel, which is the name of his house, his name is in it. So the name belongs to him. It's his. Okay? Not his in a personal sense that that's what he calls himself, but his in, a, in ownership because he's the one that instituted it. Now, he wants us to be holy. So if he calls it Bethel, what should we call it? Right. If he calls right. you Yisrael, what should we call it? Should we go and say, well, I'm Baptist. I don't care what, what God says. Well, there's a place for you when you do that. Mm -hmm. So in the uh, third chapter, verse 18 of Exodus, he gave his people the license to tell Pharaoh that the Lord God of the Hebrews has met with us. Now, if you think about this, was originally in the Hebrew language. He is owning up to the fact that he is part or belongs to the Hebrews, and he was speaking Hebrew. So shouldn't you love it just as much as he does because he's righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works? So whatever he gives you is righteous and holy. If you believe that, then you will accept what he gave you and not what man gives you. Right. And um, we talked about um, the last four or five weeks. We talked about that word of. We're, we're saying that he belongs to the Hebrew people. Therefore, when he named them, of shows ownership. That means that he belonged to that language. He belonged to that culture. Um, we go back into the book of Genesis when he said with Abraham that I will make of thee a great nation. That's so when right. he made this great nation, um, now the, they weren't in Israel yet, but he says when I will make of thee a great nation, he gave them a language. They had a culture. They had a lot of things. And so we're not suggesting or even saying, because I know somebody out there is thinking, well, I don't speak Hebrew. When we talk about the names, we're not saying that you have to speak Hebrew, but the names that come from him has to be the original name and it has to retain its original sound because it's holy and he named it. I mean, what do we look like renaming something that's holy that came from heaven? So because he said Yisrael, the covenant was made, and I can't emphasize on that enough, that the name, the sound of this name is important. Not just the sound of the name. Of course, we got to do a lot of things. We have to live right. We have to keep the commandments. But the covenant wasn't made with the people that were called Israel. It was made with the people that were called by the name of Israel. Now, Second Kings, the 17th chapter, verse 34, it goes on to tell us that this name didn't come from man. Now, some people, and I don't want to go off and left field with this, believe that when they see Israel in their English Bible, that the Bible is referring to the land of Israel. But here it's saying in 2 Kings 17.34 that God was responsible with naming these people. It says, until this day, they do after the former manners. They fear not the Lord, neither do they after their statutes or after the ordinances or after the law and commandments, which the Lord commanded the children of, now the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named. He named them. That's and he, right. we just seen that he spoke Hebrew, so he named them in the Hebrew tongue. He named them by the name of Yisrael. So I hope that was clear. If, if anybody has any questions, please write that down and um, those questions down, and we can come back to this um, when we get towards the end. So uh, um, There's a number of different things that we can say about the name of Yisrael. The Bible tells us in the book of Genesis, the, t the 32nd chapter, verse 26 through 28, that it is a blessed name. And, and um, in Genesis, the 32nd chapter, and if you just go ahead and go back, and I'm not going to go through the whole story, but Jacob was wrestling with God, called it the angel of God here, and he asked for something. So let's pick it up from what, what Jacob said. It's 26 says, and he said, let me go, and this is the angel of God talking, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, now this is Jacob who said this, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. 
Yes. And he and he said unto him, What is thy name? Now, Jacob asked for something. Jacob asked for a blessing. And he says, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Now, the conversation goes back and forth. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Yisrael. And we talked five weeks ago about this word for. For means this is the reason. I'm going to tell you what Yisrael means. It says, For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, and hast prevailed. So the name was given to Jacob. Jacob asked for a blessing, and Jacob received a name. Now, I know most people say, well, that's not a blessing. I don't see a blessing in that. But, Elder Avery, when he gave the name, he told you what the name means. It says oh, that you're going to have power with God and with men and has prevailed. So if you have power with God, that means that he's going to deliver you from any circumstances. I mean, what if Jacob would have got rich and he asked for wealth and God gave him wealth? Well, to have power with God is saying that when I get into any circumstances or anything that is against me, God is going to deliver me. When you talk about having power with men, it means that you're going to be influential. You're going to have an influence. You're going to be able to go into that job, and you're going to be able to prevail when people go against you or you want their promotion or things are not going well. Now, the name Israel does not mean that you won't go through problems. It does not mean that everything is going to always go your way. But it essentially what it means is that you are going to prevail. And why are you going to prevail? Because this name belongs to God. And if you possess this name and you live holy, God is going to deliver you. So that's why that's this right. is a blessed name, Elder Ivory. That's all right. And, you know, I, I want to say this uh, because... Thus far, we've been giving uh, verses from the Old Testament, and I can hear it just as loud as I can hear uh, what you're saying. I can hear somebody saying, well, uh, that's not in the New Testament, because we got some people who are what they call New Testament saints. And we got something for you today. In just a little while, we're going to show you how blessed this name is according to the New Testament. Now, right. you don't want to believe the Old Testament? I'll come to you from the New Testament and show you that God doesn't change. This name is in the New Testament. It's there clearly, and it shows you just how blessed it is. So don't go anywhere. Stay right there so you can find out how blessed this name is in the New Testament. All right. When we get to that, I'm going to just be quiet. I'm going to let Ivory go at it. So <laughs> when we get to those Bible verses, prevail means to be greater in strength or influence. That means you're going to be greater than everybody. You're going to prevail against the enemy to be or become effective, to win out, to be most common or frequent, be predominant, a region where snow and ice prevail. So you're going to prevail over all those things that are against you now. Don't run out here after this Bible study. And, I mean, you, I'm going to prevail. I'm called by the name of Yisrael. And then they, you go outside and they done towed your car. They done repoed your car or something like that. So people say, well, where's the prevailing power in that? Well, if you continue to live right, if you continue to believe in God, don't you know he got something better for you? And so we're saying that, you know, you can't look at each uh, instance and say, well, what did I prevail in this? You know, my house got burned down or something happened negative. He's going to turn those negatives into a positive. And so prevail, you have to wait. You have to wait on the outcome if you call by this name. That's all right. Yisrael is a family name. Um, and, and Isaiah, the 45th chapter, verse 4, the family name was given by the father. And um, we're going to see in the book of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, um, verse 6 and 7, that the name of the children was called by this name, Yisrael. Um, Isaiah 45 and 4, it says, For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Yisrael, mine elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. So, Elder, if we could talk um, uh, briefly. I know we're at about 830 now. Um, surname, how does that put people in the family name? What does that mean? Well, and I want you to think about it from this perspective. This is a family name that came from God. And I, I'm stressing the English word God because most of you are familiar with that. But 
It's his name. So that made it his because he instituted it. Now you have become a part of his family. That's his family name for you. And once we take on that name, he will back us up when we're in trouble because we have depended on him, we've trusted in his name, and we're going to show you also in the Old Testament that that's the name for his elect. So you can't just take this name and just think, oh, I'm going to be blessed. No, you're going to have to live right. Right. And when you live right and walk up right and, and walk up to the stature of the measure of his name, he will be with you, he will protect you, and he will allow you to prevail over every situation. Right. And in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verse 1, and then we're going to jump to 6 and 7, um, it says, But now thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Yisrael, fear not. Who did he tell not to fear? Right. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. So now he's saying, I've saved thee. We're going to show that this salvation is going to continue in the New Testament. I've saved thee. I have even called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. We jump down to verse 6 and 7. He says, I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the now, ends I, of I'm the earth. I'm sorry. You, you got to stop right there and let that marinate a little bit. Who are his sons and daughters? Right. Israel. Those are his sons. And don't keep running around talking about I'm a child of God and I'm a Christian because he never called you Christian. Even the Apostle Peter, when he said, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. He was only saying, if you suffer for being like Christ, because that's what, Christian, what, what, that, what that word means. It means to be like Christ. It's not a religion. It wasn't a religion then. It didn't become a religion until later on when man got into it. Right. So if you suffer for being like Christ, don't be ashamed. But Israel are his sons and his daughters. Do you want to be a child of the king? Then you must carry the king's name. Amen. Verse 7, he says, Even everyone that is called by my name, for yes. I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Um, right. Now, I, I can't remember if I put it in here or not. Um, boy, I hate to jump the gun. But he says, I formed them. Okay. And we talked okay. about, um, boy, I don't know, Eldie, if you remember if I put it in. That yes, you did. Okay, we'll get to it later then. And uh, you you, know. it's also in this verse you just read. Okay, well, I'll wait until I get down further to talk about it. That's all um, right. Not everyone that is called by this name are true Israel. Now, I'm going to, you know, it may, it may sound rude, but, I, I mean, it's the fact. And we're talking about the Bible. We're talking about factual things that he didn't name them and they will swear up and down that they're the people of God. They, he didn't name them Hebrew Israelites. Okay. People will say, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, a child of God. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. You know, one of the first things you have to be, you have to do is be called by the name of Yisrael. He didn't call Hebrew Israelite is a description. Now, if you talk to any Hebrew Israelite, Get on Facebook or, or some of the ones that you know, talk to them, and you ask them what is the name of the son or ask them what the name of the father. And I can guarantee you 99.9% .9 of the time they will not give you an English name. They will give you a Hebrew name. Then don't you find it strange that they call themselves by English names? Why would he call his own personal name by a Hebrew name, but he don't call his people by a Hebrew name? Well, I'm a and, and, and so... Um, you know, I don't know how they missed that, but he didn't call them Hebrew Israelites. But furthermore, you're going to find people who call themselves by the name of Yisrael. Um, and, and this is another thing why this is important, Elder Ivory, is because, um, as I told some of my students last Saturday, when you say that I'm an Israelite or I'm, I'm Yisrael, people are going to go to some Bible verses in the Old Testament and a few in the New Testament and show that, the, the, the negative concept or the negative things that were said about Israel. You know, the Bible speaks very negatively about Israel sometimes. 
And this is what people would do. Let me read these real quick, uh, Elder. Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We're going to talk a lot about Second Chronicles at the end. But the point is that these people were wicked. But guess what? They were his people called by his name. Joshua, the seventh chapter, verse 12, it says, Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies. Okay? In the book of Judges, the second chapter, verse 10, and I'm going to just jump down to verse 11. Uh, well, let me read verse 10. And also all the generations were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Yehoah and served Balaam. In the book of Romans, which is a great uh, Bible verse, New Testament, it says, Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are, all, which are of Israel. So all the ones that are in America are not racist or are not crooks. You know, some people overseas say, well, you know, Americans are murderers. Or they, well, yeah, there are a lot of murderers, but you can't classify everybody in America and say that they're murderers. So you had a lot of people that were called Yisrael, but they were not true Yisrael. And that's what Romans 9 and 6 is saying. Um, even in the book of John, the 8th chapter, it says, They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. So these, this was Yisrael talking. And Yash, Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of, it, of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. So they believed in the one father. And, and, and Christ went and said to them, Ye are of your father, the devil. Now, this was just right here he was talking to. That's all right. Okay. If I might just say quickly, yes. uh, the Bible, it makes a clear difference between the true people, Israel, and those that just called themselves by the name Israel. You made it, it's, it's very clear in Second Chronicles 7.14. And I don't want any of our listeners to conclude that all you got to do is be called by that name. That is a first important step. But if you just look at it again very closely, if my people, which are called by my name. So if you're not called by his name, he's not even talking to you. But he said, shall humble themselves. You got to be humble. That means you have to receive his word when it's given to you and pray and seek my face. Now, I'm sure that most of you don't know what it means when it says seek my face because his face is located in a certain place. And that's another lesson. But in order for you to be the people, you must seek his face. You must know how that's done. We can tell you how that's done. We won't do it today. And turn from their wicked ways. Then, not before now, but then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. So there's a process involved. The first step in that process is to be called by his name. And once you do that, then you must learn how to become the people, not just be called by that name. And we're going to expand on that. I think that's one of the last slides we have again. We want to talk about that again when we get to the end. Um, every covenant found in the Bible is made for Israel. Now, some people may be shocked by this. Every single covenant in the Bible was made to Israel and made for Israel. Um, a couple of Bible verses, Deuteronomy 29 and 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel. Um, in Exodus 34, 27, it says, I have made a covenant with thee and with Israel. In the book of Exodus, the 31st chapter, verse 16, it says, Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath through their generations for a perpetual covenant. Um, New Testament, Romans, the ninth chapter, verse 4. It said, Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption? They pertain the adoption and the glory 
and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God. You mean to tell me that they're the ones who get the service of God and the promises? So this is who Israelites are. Um, in Jeremiah 31, you ever hear people say, uh, you talking that Old Testament, Old Covenant, he put us, we under the New Covenant. And they're right, we under the New Covenant. But let's read Jeremiah 31, 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Jehovah, which is Lord, that I make, that I will make a new covenant. And that's all they say. We have a new covenant. But look what he made it with, with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So even the new covenant was made with Israel. Okay. So it's funny how you get to the New Testament and people believe that we're under the new covenant, which we are under the new covenant. But how do you get to the new covenant and then and get into the New Testament and now you just drop Yisrael and say, well, we got the new covenant. Well, where's Yisrael at? Um, finally, Psalms 105.10, it says, and confirm the same unto Jacob for a law and to Yisrael for an everlasting covenant. So there are covenants that were given that were everlasting covenants. I mean, his word is true. I don't care if it didn't say everlasting, but he gave some everlasting covenants. If I might just uh, butt in for just a minute, mm -hmm. I could I could hear some people saying cause when you first made that statement about uh, every covenant found in the Bible was made with this right. I take mm -hmm. it a step further. Everything God did. He did it for his people, Israel. And and I, I heard when you first said that, somebody quoting a verse. And they said, the, the verse, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. And they okay. actually believe that God loved everybody in the world. And that's not what it said. No. If you they examine reading. it, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Now, why did he do it? That whosoever believeth. So it's not for the whole world. It's for the whosoever believeth in right. him should right. not perish, but have everlasting life. And who is it that would believe in him? His people, yes, right. All right. He made the sun for them. He made everything for them. And guess what? He made the kingdom for them. And if you're going trying to go into the kingdom and you don't become his people, you're going to have a, a upset stomach. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, and, and that goes, we're not talking about how to become Yisrael because I know, again, as you said, you hear people saying, well, that can't be so because I'm not Yisrael, I'm not Israel, I'm not born in that land. So this Bible study is not designed to tell you, but you can become Yisrael. This Bible study is not designed for that. Let me say this before I move on because we're kind of running a little bit behind. i um, got about eight or nine more slides. But in, in Genesis, the 28th chapter, verse 14, and I say this almost every week. If you read that, and it's talking to Jacob, it says, In thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. I'm going to say that That's again. All right. That's in all right. thee and in thy seed shall all yes. the families of the earth be blessed. And so the covenants were given to Israel first. And how, guess how they were going to bless the world? Because God mm -hmm. dealt with Yisrael, this is who his covenant is with. It is Yisrael's responsibility to go out and give this message to the world. And That's one right. of the messages that they need to give them, and we're going to see in the New Testament, is that they have to become Yisrael in order to obtain all the covenants of salvation. We're going to see that in the New Testament. His people are formed. This means that they were not his people in the beginning. Um, and I'm going to go through this, Elder, in Genesis, the first chapter. Now, some people believe that God just created all, I mean, God created the earth, and when he created the earth, he created a people by the name of Israel. And that's not the case. The Bible tells us in the book of Genesis, when he said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, it says, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he, him, male and female. The Bible never mentioned anything about Israel. You never see the word or the name Israel, until it was given to Jacob when he wrestled with the angel of God. Um, in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, verse 9, it says, The Lord shall establish thee and holy people. When he shall establish, that means that they were not established in the beginning. But it said that he will establish. Okay, so that means he was going to form them. And we see that again uh, in Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verse 1, 
where it says, But now thus says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Yisrael, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. So he has to form Yisrael. You don't come out being Yisrael. Your birth does not make you Yisrael. Once you come into the understanding of his knowledge, and you begin to keep all his law, statute, and covenant, and do everything that he says. Then the Bible talks about in Jeremiah when he's going to circumcise your heart. And this is when he begins to form you, and you're going to become Yisrael. We're going to see that in the New Testament. It's all right. And, uh, Elder, let's go ahead and, and talk about this, if you can. Gentiles saved by grace. And this is very important. This is where we're going to see how they're formed. Are the Gentiles, you know, people say, I'm not no Jew, I'm not Israel, I'm a Gentile saved by grace. Is there such a thing? Let me go ahead and read this, and, and I'm going to let you go ahead and, and comment on the Elder. In Ephesians, and I know, don't know why I continue to forget to put these Bible verses in here. This is coming from Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 11, verse 12, and verse 19. It says, Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, um, who are called the uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision. And I'm going to go ahead and just turn it over to you, Elder, because you may want to stop at certain points to bring out certain things. So, Well, um, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Let me say, now, when we read this next verse, it's contingent upon the first verse, because you were Gentiles in the flesh. And it says that at that time, what time? When you were Gentiles, ye were without Christ. First thing I want you to see is that Gentiles don't have Christ. You can say I'm saved by grace all you want to say it. Gentiles, according to the verse we're reading, don't have Christ. When you were a Gentile, at that time, you were without Christ. Why? Because you were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. I told you that this Israel was in the New Testament. Now, why are you without Christ? Because you're aliens to the commonwealth of Israel. We're going to see what a commonwealth is. The commonwealth actually is, is talking about your citizenship in the family of God. Now, you are not only uh, aliens, but strangers from the covenants of promise. We all talk about uh, Father Abraham and how uh, the blessings of Abraham are, are unto us. And we get mad when when uh, Muslims say that they are, are entitled to the promise. Christians get so upset with that sometimes. But you know what? You're not entitled as a Christian. Because the commonwealth has to do with everything that Israel has in common as a nation. So all the promises, the covenants of promise that God blessed his people with, you are not entitled to them as a Gentile because at that time you were without Christ. And mm -hmm. it didn't stop there. Nope. Having no hope. Who has no hope? Gentiles. And without God in the world. Who is without God in the world? Gentiles. Now the writer is going to move from your past See, if you're still a Gentile saved by grace, guess what? You don't have God and you don't have Christ. But now, therefore, ye are no more strangers. Now, what caused you no longer to be a stranger and a foreigner, but fellow citizens? Now, I told you this had to do with your citizenship. This is a family. This is the nation of God. And you have to be a member of it if you expect to have the promises. The covenant of promise. You can say all you want. Ishmael came from Abraham too. But Ishmael was not promised where Isaac was promised. And those that kept the commandments and were called by the name Israel. You have to do it today. But fellow citizens with the saints. Who are the saints? Israel. Who's without hope? Gentiles. Who has God? Israel, who doesn't have God, the Gentile, who has Christ, Israel, and who's without Christ, the Gentile. We got to get that straight, and we got to get it straight really quick if we want to be saved, because it's Israel that makes up that commonwealth, 
and they are entitled to the covenants of promise. If you're not Yisrael, you are not. All right. <laughs> that, I don't want nobody chasing you now. So. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> but, I mean, the Bible says what it says. And people don't understand it, and so don't take it offensive. You know, some people going to call you a cult member. They're going to call they going to say so many bad things, but the Bible says what it says, that you don't have any hope in this world. You don't have God, and you don't have the covenants when you are a Gentile. So, as Elder Ivory said, but now, therefore, you are no more strangers and aliens, which is foreigners. Now they have the promise because they are fellow citizens with the saints. Now, commonwealth means citizenship. Mm -hmm. When you are a citizen of anything, you carry the name. Now, go out of this country and, and try to come back over here and they ask you, are you an American citizen? If you're an American citizen, you know we have embassies all across the world. There are certain privileges that you get by being an American citizen. You get student loans. You get financial help if you're struggling financially. You get a lot of things, benefits, by being an American citizen. That's all right. Say you're, say you're not an American citizen and see if you get those promises. So the Bible saying the same thing. Let's go ahead and move on. The Gentiles are grafted in. This makes them true Yisrael. I'm going to just skip through some verses, Romans the 11th chapter, verse 1, verse 2, verse 13, verse 24, and 26. When you get a chance, read Romans the 11th chapter. Let's go ahead and skip through. It says, I say then, hath God cast away his people? This is a question, a rhetorical question. God forbid. Paul said, for I am, all, he said, for I also am a Yisraelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Paul goes on and says in 13, For I speak to the Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. It says, For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree. This is talking about the Jews. You know, there was a lot of Jews that went against Christ. Well, they broke off of that branch. Okay, they broke off of the tree. And the Gentiles were grafted in. But when they talk about the natural branches, it's going to say that the Jews, they're going to be true Jews. Everybody's going to be the same. But look at what, what verse 26 says. Now, it's talking about the Gentiles and those Jews that live right. It says, and so all Israel shall be saved. So the grafting in of the people made them all yes right here. It didn't say, so the Jews shall be saved. It didn't say, well, you Gentiles is going to be saved. It says all yes right here is going to be saved. That means that you're going to be grafted in. You are all going to be called by the same name if you keep all the commandments of God. You know, you're stirring me up over here, and I don't get want fired to, up, Elder. I don't want to go. <laughs> I don't want to get fired up so much that I just keep talking. But we read your Bible. Well, when you read about Peter, Peter was Israel. When you, you just read this about Paul, Paul is Israel. Even the Savior himself, he was a Jew. And the Jew was another term they used for the people of El. They call Israel. How is it that you read the Bible in the New Testament and you hear Peter speaking to uh, Israel, to Israel, and you can't see that? You think he was speaking to a bunch of Christians? How is it that you can read those things but yet not get that understanding? You're going to have to get the understanding, and you're going to have to get it quick. We have to grow up fast in this day and time because we're behind the eight ball because the enemy was allowed to come in and deceive the whole world. I'm sorry he deceived you, but we're here to help straighten you out. All right. And um, we're going to move on. We have about maybe six, seven slides. We may go about ten minutes over, so we ask that you bear with us. Um, this is an excellent Bible study, and it's something that we may have to make sure that we get out and that you really understand. Did you know that even the Jew must be reborn? It's all right. This is what the Bible was talking about in that last slide where it said that the, um, the good branches will break off, but they're going to come back. 
in the book of John, the third chapter, you read about Nicodemus. Um, and, and Nicodemus was a Pharisee, okay? He was the ruler of the Jews. That means that all the Jews looked up to Nicodemus. Um, he was a spiritual leader. And so let's just read that. It says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus. Now, Pharisees is a sect of the Jews. They were Yisrael as well. They were false Yisrael, but they were called Yisrael. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, Nicodemus was stunned by this. He didn't know what this meant. It says, Nicodemus said unto him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? So Nicodemus was dumbfounded by this. Jesus answered, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So it is a spiritual operation that takes place when you become true Yisrael. All right? And we have to see that in, in here. And this is what a problem with a, a lot of Jews that don't accept Christ and don't accept the New Testament, that they don't partake in this particular process. And you cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven without going through this process. So the Jew... There's no such thing as a Jew. Uh, now, the world has a Jew, but when it comes to God, and we're going to show that Bible verse, there's no such thing as salvation is to you because of your lineage or because of your bloodline or because of where you were born. But we all have to go through this process. The entire world, Elder, when we talked about this Bible verse earlier, do you know that the entire world will be deceit? The entire world world will be deceived except for his people, Israel. They're the only ones that's going to know the truth. Don't believe me? Let's read what the Bible says. We read Revelations, and, and stay with me up here. Revelations, the 12th chapter, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. Now, I know people read it all the time, and they cannot grasp the concept. They say, well, somebody has to be saved. Well, the book of Revelation says that the whole world is going to be deceived. But if we go and connect this with Matthew 24, 24, it tells you that everybody's going to be deceived except for people. In Matthew 24, 24, it says for there, and this is at the end time now. This is in the last days. It says for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonder in so much that if, it were possible. That's a condition. That means it's not possible. But if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And so those two Bible verses, Elder, is telling us that the entire world is going to be deceived except That's the elect. Right. Now, I'm not, this, right. is not, this is not interpretation. I'm not interpreting it. This is just plain what the Bible said. In the book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter, verse 4, now it tells you. Now, people say, that's right. That's right. The world is going to be deceived. Everybody's going to be deceived except his elect. I'm his elect. Well, so <laughs> you say. But what does the book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter, verse 4 say? It says, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Yisrael, mine elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. So we can sum up this particular slide that the whole world is going to be deceived except for God's elect who was called by the name of Yisrael. Do I think it. that was plain, Elder. That was very plain. Mm. I don't know. Elder, let's go ahead. If you go ahead and talk about this return when, when God comes back. Let's go ahead. If you can read those two Bible verses and we can talk a little bit about that. Isaiah 45 and 4 again. Uh, for Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. That's how he's going to recognize you is because he called you by your name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. But when you look in the book of Matthew, we're in the New Testament now. It says, and he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trump. And they shall gather together his elect. Well, who are they going to gather? Who are his elect? We said just read that his elect is Israel. So from cover to cover, 
from the Old Testament clean through the New Testament till you get into the last time he is talking about his people, Israel, not Christians, not uh, Church of God in Christ. It's the Church of God which is in Christ. Israel is in Christ. We just read it that they have uh, uh, Christ, not the Gentiles. So this is his people. They are his elect. And he's going to go to the four winds and he's going to get them because all, all Israel, and what that really means is all true Israel, all Israel shall be saved. Not just because you call yourself by that name, but because you keep his commandments and you walk upright and you're called by his name. Right. And uh, so these two Bible verses, I mean, and it's just clear, and you've got to keep in mind when we say this, well, they're just trying to use Bible verses um, so that they can pull people into what they believe. But we just showed that even the Gentiles were grafted in and were called Israel in the last um, slide. That's why Romans 11:26 says, all Israel shall be saved. This was the right. covenant name. This is who he promised to um, gather when he comes back. This was the ultimate blessing that he spoke of in Genesis the 28th chapter, verse 14, when he uh -huh. said that all the families of the earth would be blessed. Two more slides, three more slides, people. Get your questions ready. Who is the true Jew? Who is the true Israelite? Romans the 28th chapter, I mean, sorry, Romans the second chapter, verse 28, 29. You know, if, if he was the king of the Jews, then um, doesn't it make sense that we, if, as, remember the Bible says, Yisrael, for as a prince, thou hast power with God and with man and has prevailed. Don't you know that the prince is under the king in the hierarchy? So don't you think that the king of the Jews, that we as princes, um, would, would take on that nature? of being Christ-like and being a Jew. It says a person is not a Jew. And I'm reading from the NIV uh, version. I'm sorry, Elder, I didn't switch this to the King James. A person is not a Jew who is one only outwardly, nor is circumcision merely outward and physical. No, a person is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is circumcision of the heart. All right. In John, the fourth chapter, verse 20, look at what Christ said now. John, the fourth chapter, verse 21 through 22, it says, Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Salvation belonged to the Jews. Now, is it the Jews that are in the land that don't believe in the Messiah? No. There were false Jews and there were true Jews. But... As Elder Ebrey said earlier, the true Jew is also known as Yisrael, or they can, may also be known by description as Hebrew. And even in the Bible, in the book of Acts, we see that those disciples that follow him were Christians. So, yeah, I'm a Christian by description, but that's not my name. Okay? It's all right. Christ is looking for his sheep. Who did Christ come back for? Elder, you just read, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, Matthew, yeah. the 15th chapter, verse 21 and 24, told us who was going to believe in him. Verse 21, and you can jump in at any time, Elder, it says, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the cults of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, and saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Now, look at what Christ said. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he's coming looking for the lost sheep, because the lost sheep are going to be true sheep. That's all He's right. not for anybody else. You can say he came for the world if you want, but the Bible, out of his own mouth, this is not my interpretation. This is what he said in the New Testament. Now, people will tell you that, yes, right here, that was the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, he gave salvation to the Gentiles, but we just showed you how. John 10:16 says, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. That means they are not of this teaching. They are not of this doctrine. 
um, they are not of. Now, a fold is a place where sheep gather. We're not saying that it has to be one fold in one location, but we're talking about one doctrinal teaching. He says, them also I must bring. This is not optional. I must bring them, and, and they shall hear my voice. So until he brings you to his fold, you won't hear his voice. And that's another lesson on how you're going to hear his voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Yeah. So, so El, do you want to comment on that before we go? We have two more slides. Uh, let's just go ahead on so we can uh, get some questions in. Okay. Um, Elder talked about a lot about this, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on this. Being called by his name is just the first step. Remember, Elder, he said, if my people, which are called by my name, so in order for you to be his people, the first thing you have to do is be called by his name. That's the start. Now, that's not everything, because some people will get this information and run out. I'm Yisrael for the rest of their life. I'm Yisrael. We're not telling you how to become Yisrael today. That's another lesson. That's something that people would have to contact us. How do I become Yisrael? And how do I know the difference between true Yisrael and false Yisrael? That's why we're here. Okay? You have to humble yourself and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. And he says, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Um, our last slide, uh, just to sum up everything that we said on tonight, Christ is king of the Jews. Okay? He's the king of the Jews. That means that we are looking for our king. If we're the, he's the king of the Jews, then the Jews are his people. Uh, the Bible said that these people that possess the name Israel, who are also described as Jews, will be gathered when Christ returns. The people of God are surnamed Israel. They were given this name by the Father. The children belonging to God are called by the same name, Israel. And finally, everyone, both Jew and Gentile, must go through a conversion process, which makes them true Jew or true Israel. Okay, so we got there. I guess we got about seven minutes over. We we, we went through pretty quick the last two or three um, uh, slides, but uh, we got through it, and we do want to open it up. Um, you can on your keypad or star six on your phone if you have any questions regarding what we've talked about tonight. Um, this is a high-level um, Bible study on this particular principle. As I said last week when we talked about Bethel, um, we have lessons on Yisrael. That's probably about 27 or 28 lessons. So we just kind of had to give you a, a big overview um, of, of Yisrael itself without going into a whole lot of details, which we can do. But we want you to um, feel free to star six on your keypad, star six um, on your phone if you have any questions, and uh, we'll go ahead and, and get to those questions. But it was a beautiful lesson. I hope you got a lot out of it. Um, you know, to some people it's going to be shocking. This information is here, and you have to continue to go over this stuff and get these Bible verses. And if the Bible says it, then you stick to it. If the Bible says it, then it's right. And you don't let people go and snatch it out of you um, because their church is bigger or they have more members as a seven-day Adventist or, you know, these other religions that are called by other names. But the Bible says what it says. And so, uh, uh, you know, go back over these Bible verses, go over these lessons, and, and really um, get it and feel confident and comfortable with it. So um, star six on your phone, keypad, or star six on your <clears throat> on your uh, keypad, on your computer, if you want to have any questions. Elder, you want to go ahead and, and chime in if we wait just about three, four more minutes to see if we have any questions? Sure. I, I just want to make sure that we are not part of that group that's deceived because Satan has deceived the entire world. His tool is religion. And, I mean, if you use common sense, all these religious groups can't be right. Matter of fact, none of them are. Because he never established a religion in the first place. He established a holy people who were part of his holy nation. You need to be that people. And if you're called by his name, we can show you how to become true Israel. And that's what you want to do. Because those are the only ones he's coming back for. 
because all Israel shall be saved. Right. Um, Sister Sandra, and um, I hope I I might have to put you on (laughs) because I hope I'm understanding uh, the question. Um, You want to know, how do you tell the new sheep that they must maintain being Israel? And um, I don't know if you understand the question, L.D. Uh I think I do understand the question. And, uh, uh, the, well, let me let me continue. And that you can't be ahead. a wall, and that you can't be a wallflower, as some would call it, just saying that you are to be saved. So, um, being called by Israel is not enough. Um, how much do they have to be involved in their ministry or telling other people? Or you have to be active, not just keeping the commandments. But go ahead if you want to comment on that, Elder. Well, first of all, the Bible tells us with a loving kindness have I drawn you. I think that's one of the the, mo- the most important key elements we need to understand in drawing people to the truth is we must draw them with loving kindness. We're not out to uh, cripple anyone with the word and beat them down. We're just here to tell you the truth. Now, we're not going to shun from telling you the truth. If you don't want to hear it, you're just going to have to turn a deaf ear. But once people get the name, they must be encouraged on how to live according to the name that they've taken on. Because it's not just uh, meet the eye. You just become Israel name only. Uh, Then at that particular time, uh, we take the time to pair you off with someone that will be responsible for helping you with your growth, to help you to understand the Bible, help you to understand those things that you have questions about. If they can't answer it, they'll take it up a different level higher. But the idea is if he called you to be saved, he's calling others. So that means that you have to do something in your, in your work for him that will allow you to help win other souls. And it may just be, uh, it just doesn't have to be the same thing that we're doing. It can be, there's a number of things you can do to encourage people. But you want to be an encouragement to people to continue in the right path. So I think that we keep that in mind. Uh, we'll be doing a good job toward helping. Because it's, it's your, uh, your works that you're going to be called into the judgment for. Did you mistreat someone when you were witnessing? Were you trying to bash them and they're just trying to get an understanding? We have to, we're responsible for helping people to get an understanding. But you know what he told his disciples? If they reject you, shake the dust off your feet. And then you keep on going because he has many souls out there that want to hear his truth. And if you don't want to hear it, we don't have time to waste with you. All right. And we have to be humble unto the structure which is created, you know. And it's not to put anybody down. You know, sometimes people who have a little bit of Hebrew background or they come from um, other places that call themselves Hebrew Israelites or um, keep the Sabbath and they, they come in. You have to humble. The Bible says, if my people shall call by my name. So the first thing you have to do is to show you that you have to be called by the name. Second thing you have to do is says, and humble yourselves. You know, there are people, I humble myself. I study every day, all day. And I humble myself to, I mean, Elder Evie been here longer. Uh, he's, he's older than me, but he's been here longer, and he knows more. And I know some stuff, but even if I think that I, I can teach a certain way, you know, I humble myself to him. So when you come in, I'm teaching, you have to humble yourself to me. And it's just a complete system because learning how to be saved, it, it takes a pro, it, it take, it's a process. And it takes time, learn how to keep the commandments correctly, and all the things that we should do in this walk. And so um, being called by the name, as Elder Ivory said, you, you pair up with um, somebody, one of the elders, and somebody who's strong in the church who can show you how you should continue in this walk. And so um, it's a learning process. It's something that we have to deal with people um, individually on. Um, how do you keep the Sabbath? How do you get into the gate? Um, and just, there's just a whole bunch of things. So I hope we answered your question, uh, Sister Sandra. And if I might add, when you ask questions, you're actually helping us because we're going to take the time to study to find out the answer because we don't automatically know all the answers. So that means we may have to go back and study and get the answer. We may have to go to someone else that's over us and get the answer. The idea is that we want to get you an answer, and we refuse to give you an answer 
that we made up an answer that we don't we're not sure of. Mm-hmm. So keep asking questions. I, I want to encourage you to ask questions. I don't think of questions as dumb questions because if it's concerning your soul, that question needs to be answered. All right. Um, before we go, I just want to make sure we talked about this lesson. It is a psychological warfare. It is a psychological thing that's going on. LD reset it a few weeks ago that it, when Satan takes certain things, we read today how it was a plot in Psalms 83, verse 1 through 3. It was a plot to destroy the name of Israel. And it was a plot because every covenant, as we said, every covenant was made with the people that carried this name. And so you go through three and four generations, your your mother and your grandmother and your great-grandmother, and if we can take it out of the remembrance of people, when you come along here in the year 2013 and somebody's trying to show you Yisrael, people are looking at you like, man, you are crazy. You have spouses that look at you funny. You have friends that look at you funny. And now it's the whole world. Because this was destroyed, when you try to restore those things of ancient past that God tells us to do. Now we look funny to everybody else, but they're the ones that's funny. And so we have, you know, we have to be mentally strong to know that if the Bible says it, and I told you, and I'll say it every week, the burden of proof is on myself and Elder Ivory. The burden of proof is on us to prove everything that we say. And you should challenge those things that we say and make us prove it to you because it's understanding that keeps you. If you have any questions, we ask that you send any of those questions to Bible study at basel.net. We'll be sure to get back with you. Um, if you don't feel comfortable asking online or in the chat room, uh, send us those questions, and Elder Ebrey and myself will get back with you. We have a world of information on our website. Um, we have 90 blog talk episodes, and we have a lot of podcasts and things that you can look at, videos. We ask that you go to tvbaythel.net. We want you to become a member of Bethel Temple and College, and, and um, this teaching and this growth that you're going to get is, is unbelievable. Um, the covenant of promise is with Israel, and we want to continue to teach and show you how you can obtain salvation by not just being called by that name, but we want to teach you how to become Israel. Um, if you become a member, you can enjoy many of the benefits of being here with us um, in the comfort of your homes. A lot of people don't have Bethels in their area or temples in their area, but we want to continue to teach you. Um, from wherever you're at, so we don't want to deny um, anyone the um, knowledge and understanding that we get here um, here in, in Chicago and our other locations across the country and throughout the world. Um, we should be sh- done shortly with all the courses that I talked about on our subjects, and we're um, in the process of, of getting our closed circuit TV channel available. You also will have access to our weekly TV and audio seminars. And as L.D. Re said, you're going to get with a minister who you can contact and who can help support you through this walk. And so we thank you. Um, we are sorry that we went a little bit over, but this information was important and it was, it was needed. I uh, want to thank you all for taking the time out to um, sit in on the Bible study with us. Um, this session is recorded. Um, it will be on our Facebook page, um, and it will also be on our YouTube channel. You guys have to go back, and I've been looking, and I don't see too many um, repeat listens and downloads. So you guys have to go back and read these Bible studies. And, you know, if you're ministering to people, let these Bible studies be used. Um, that you may just send it to somebody in their personal email when you're witness on a particular subject. And so we have them there for you, and we do this for you so that you can grow. Okay, so we thank you all for joining us. We um, hope to see most of you this weekend, this Sabbath, and we ask that you have a great rest of the week. All right. All right. Shalom. Shalom.